Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the Victory Assured broadcast. This is Pastor Whitfield, and we're so elated that you're here. Today, we're going to be talking about something that has been on my heart for the past few weeks now. And I want to go into the Word of the Lord briefly and share those things with you. But before we get started, call a family member or friend and let them know that the Word of the Lord is about to be declared. God bless you. Let us pray and then we'll go right into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you as always in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray, God, as we go through the word today, that you send your anointing. God, open our ears in the spirit and allow us to hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say to us today. God, we pray that you forgive us of anything that has entered into our lives that will hinder or prevent your spirit from having preeminence in our lives. So God, we turn ourselves into your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Sing your anointing and bless us through your word today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen, as we go into the word today, I just want to make mention of how this word became relevant in my spirit. I was actually en route to some place last week and a warning sign showed up on my dashboard on my car. Something minor, but yet something that I really needed to pay attention to. The letter B and the number one. Then I visited a church service and on either side of the auditorium, there was this sign that says B1. The same letter B and the same number one. So when I looked at that, I kept rehearsing that in my spirit. It stuck with me. B1. So today we're going to talk about B1, be a believer. And some of those things that are pertinent for all of us as the children of God and those that are striving to have a relationship with God need to know. So we've already prayed. We're going to go right into the word of the Lord. I have a couple of passages of scripture that we'll start off with. And we'll get into some other passages of scripture just in a few moments. But the first one I want to start off with is 1 John, the fifth chapter, and the 13th verse. And it reads as follows. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And I want to repeat that. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, which we all know is Jesus Christ. But it's interesting that John writes this particular verse, not to unbelievers, but to believers. Listen to the wording of the, of the scripture or the verse. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. So he is definitely writing this to believers, those who know the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have experienced the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have received the rebirth of G in the Spirit by Jesus Christ, and those who make it a life practice of loving Him, studying Him, worshiping Him, believing Him, believing in His Word, and believing that He will ultimately come back for the church. But why is John writing this to people who all ready believe we can see that in the very next part of that verse that ye may know that ye have eternal life there were some people questioning whether or not they had received eternal life from the Lord a believer functioning in unbelief want that to sink in a believer functioning in unbelief and not fully comprehending 
and understanding what has transpired in their lives. And there are times in our lives that we fully don't understand the things that the Lord has done for us. He's doing for us, can do for us, and will do for us. And we struggle sometimes in our faith and in our walk and in our belief. But here today, the Lord wants to address the struggles and the difficulties that we have as believers following him, understanding him, embracing him, walking with him, and coming to a full competent level of faith in him, that there is no question in our spirit man as to our existence in him, our belief in him, his belief for us, and that we should devote our lives to the pureness of believing and trusting in the Lord, God Almighty. Listen, let me finish that verse out. And it says, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The Bible lets us know very clearly that the name of Jesus Christ is extremely powerful. This is a name given to him in eternity. Jesus, Yahshua, Jehovah, or Jehovah is salvation. He wants us to see it from the scriptures and see it from his love that Yahshua, or Jesus, is our salvation. Not only is he our salvation, he is our strength. He is our might. He is the power of our lives. And he is the power of transformation. We think about transformation only as it pertains to coming to salvation. We only think of transformation or salvation when it comes to our initial transformation from sin into righteousness. But oftentimes, some believers never think of the transformative power of Jesus Christ that is in the name of Jesus Christ to be a continual process. The Bible says very clearly that we go from faith to faith. It is a journey. And we are never off of the road of that journey. We are always traveling the process of transformation, being changed, being transformed, being made into the image of God, taking on the mindset of God, and understanding what faith and believing and belief truly means. It means that we trust in the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord said that the Lord has told him to sit down at my right hand, the place of power, until I make all of thine enemies thy footstool. The Bible said that there is no other name given of the heavens whereby men must be saved. The Bible also further states that at the name of Jesus Christ, every tongue and every knee, both in heaven and earth, will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord unto the glory of God the Father. The Bible also lets us know that the Word of God, who is Jesus Christ, created every single thing. You see that in John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelled amongst us. And further down in that chapter, it says that God spoke by Jesus Christ, and everything that was came into creation, to paraphrase that. So Jesus Christ has the power not only to transform, but to create victories. Let that sink in. 
he has the power not only to create, but to bring forth powerful victories and changes in our lives. Let's look at Matthew, the 17th chapter, and we'll come back to 1 John, the 5th chapter, the 13th verse, in just a few seconds. But it says here in Matthew, the 17th chapter, verses 19 to 21, we'll probably pause at one point. But it says, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Talking about the devil. Many of us, are experiencing situations that the devil's power and influence is all involved in it. It's not that the situation is imminent anymore. We're living in the midst of the struggle, of the pain. We're seeing the devil's hand at work. We're not glorifying him. Let's understand this because many of us as Christians, we don't want to hear about the devil. We don't want to deal with the devil. But who in the world is your fight against? The Bible clearly lets us know in the book of Ephesians that our wrestle, our struggle, our warfare is not with flesh and blood. It isn't with the people that you see the circumstances that you're experiencing, it's with unforeseen forces of pure evil and wickedness. And once we come to understand the realm of the spirit and the dastardly deeds of the devil and his imps and demons, we take on a different mindset, which the disciples in Matthew, the 17th chapter, and the 19th verse did not have. They walked with Jesus. They saw spiritual things, heard spiritual things, but still were yet ignorant of the realm of the Spirit. And they came to Jesus, and they said to him, Why could not we cast him out? They did not understand the full strength of the opposing force. And Jesus said unto them, listen, the very thing that restricts our ability to gain victory over the devil is oftentimes our unwillingness to believe. Jesus said very clearly, and very plainly to his disciples, because of your unbelief. Pause. Today I'm here to help your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ grow substantially to the very point that you no longer question or believe in the Lord in various situations that you find yourself in. This is a day of spiritual graduation. Going from the depths of being in unbelief, moving to the realms where nothing is impossible unto them that believe in the Lord. That's every single thing that we as Christians are faced with, our belief will conquer our unbelief, our fears, our disadvantages, every single warfare that we find ourselves in, and it will give us the victory. How many are just ready for its pure victory? I'm talking about walking as a conqueror, where the Bible said that we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. A conqueror does not live in the spirit of unbelief or faithlessness or, wa or wavering between multiple decisions. They are firm, 
They are tenastic in nature. They are focused. They believe God without question, without doubt, without fear, and they stand up against the face of the enemy with a holy boldness that few have seen. Listen, Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by fasting and prayer. Jesus presents to all of us a major key to conquer unbelief. It means we must be willing to deny our flesh. Our natural means of taking in substance, food, water, and nourishment and taking on the mindset and the mentality of Jesus when he said to his disciples and said to the Pharisees and the scribes that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We have been existing too much in the realm of familiarity. We talked about that a few weeks ago. We are so used to the things that our body is so familiar with and used to. How often when God calls us into a place of prayerfulness to be coupled with fasting, do we yield to it? Do we rebuke it? Do we obey the voice of God? Or do we repel it thinking that this will not work? When Jesus is telling us very clearly that the fast that he is called is to undo the heavy burdens, to release the yoke, to let the captive and the oppressed go free, to deal our bread to those who have not, and to show mercy, love, and kindness, and all those things, so that our righteousness would break forth as the noonday sun, and our victories will be assured. He has given us a major key that when we trust in the power that is in his name, we can have small faith coupled by unbelief, with belief. And he says very clearly in his word, hallelujah, Jesus, that we will be able to speak unto the mountain and the mountain shall be removed. There are mountains that are in your way. There are obstacles that are in your way. And God is saying, pray with fasting, with believing. Excommunicate and separate yourself from doubt. Separate yourself from fear. Separate yourself from the situation at hand. Understand the seriousness of the encounter. But understand the power <coughs> of an almighty God. Of an almighty God. Understand the power of an almighty God. Because this almighty, all-powerful, ever-evolving, substantial, omnipotent God who is omnipresent. Omnipotent means all powerful. There is absolutely no spirit, no human authority that has, has or possesses the power 
that our God possesses. Jesus is saying, take the handcuffs of unbelief off of me. Stop restricting me. Release my power in your life by believing. No circumstances, no situation, <clears throat> no circumstances, no situation can impede my hand. The only thing that can impede me from moving on your behalf is unbelief, fear, and the lack of faith. I've given you the tools by saying, have a mustard seed of faith and believe that nothing is impossible. Fast, pray, and believe in the name of the Son of God who is Jesus, I'm the Christ. He says, he is the power of your life. Let's look at what he really wants us to believe in. He wants us to believe in the fact that these things go out, but by fasting and praying, every challenge that you are faced with right here, right now, in the very presence of the Lord. Let's just take a praise break to release. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's just take a praise break to release. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's just take a praise break. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. To thine be the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you have not had a release in your spirit in such a long period of time. You have missed the living water, which has added and aided that spirit of unbelief that has attacked your soul. You used to walk in such great faith you used to believe the Lord for the impossible when many of your friends and even fellow Christians told you that it was foolish. But yet, your faith was strong. Your faith was powerful. What hindered you? What ran up on you? What hurtful, what demeaning, what the pleading situation came up. But God is saying, release it in my presence today with a simple, meaningful, but yet powerful praise before me. Release your praise in the very presence of the Lord. Release that energy that came upon you with a praise. Release it through your worship and enter into the courts of the Lord with thanksgiving and gratefulness. He knows how to distinguish your praise and the release of unbelief and fear and anger and bitterness 
and the influence of the enemy. And in that exchange of giving him your faith and your worship and your praise and releasing the lack of faith and unbelief, he makes an even exchange with you by placing in your spirit an unadulterated faith <laughs> that is sustaining, that is fulfilling, that is perpetual. Standing under an open heaven where God releases greater faith into your life that nothing could ever cause your faith to ever again be shaken at its core. God wants you to believe this basic rudimentary truth that your fasting, the enemy never wants you to fully surrender unto God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. He never wants you to fully surrender the very thing that has been pressing your heart before the Lord God Almighty. He wants to keep you in the courts of unbelief. He wants to keep you cloaked in fear and he wants those chains to remain but your act of faith today to bless the Lord to press in to his presence has gained you an opportunity only afforded to few Christians. And that is to have a faith exchange that will not be denied by the Lord God Almighty. He has made an exchange with you in his court. Listen, that pillages the very enemy that stops him in his very tracks and tells him, I command you to return unto my servant whom you have pillaged, whom you have stolen from, to return everything that you've taken from them a hundredfold. Listen, in this faith exchange, the devil has no choice but to release your possessions. Your faith of worshiping today and blessing the Lord has caused the prayer of David to descend into your life shall I pursue, and shall I recover all? And it has extended unto you the answer of God. You shall pursue, you shall overtake, and you shall recover all. By this faith exchange in the Lord God.